The extensor carbi and naris arises from a common extensor origin on the lateral epicondyle of the humerus. It is inserted into the posterior surface of the base of the fifth metacarpal bone. The tendon lies in the sixth dorsal extensor compartment of the rest. The extensor carbine and naris tendon has its own fibroosseous tunnel near the rest. It is the only rest extensor that lies in its own fibroosseous tunnel. The extensor carbine and naris tendon passes through a groove on the ulnar side of the distal ulna. This groove is covered by the annular ligament. The muscle acts to extend and ulnar deviate the hand at the rest. It helps the extensor carbi radialis longus and previs in extension of the rest. The nerve supply is the posterior interosseous nerve. Two conditions are clinically important and related to the extensor carbi and naris. One is recurrent subluxation of the extensor carbi and naris tendon. The tendon dislocates with spination and relocates with pronation. The subluxation of the tendon is secondary to rupture of the extensor carbi and naris sheath and is usually subluxed in a volar to ulnar direction. Recurrent dislocation will have a painful snap over the ulnar dorsal aspect of the wrist, especially during forearm rotation. With spination and ulnar deviation, the tendon leaves the sheath and the groove. The patient will have pain with an audible snap and this will cause tendinitis. And as I said, with spination, the tendon dislocates and with pronation, the tendon relocates. When the tendon subluxes, the extensor carbi and naris tendon becomes more palpable with the patient's wrist extended and ulnarly deviated. This condition can be confused with recurrent subluxation of the distal radioulnar joint. The extensor carbi and naris subsheath is critical to the extensor carbi and naris tendon stability and is part of the TFCC. MRI may show tendinitis, a tear, or may show triangular fibrocartridge tear, which occurs in about 50% of the cases as shown by arthroscopy. The diagnosis is usually a clinical one. Attention should be given to the possibility of triangular fibrocartilage tear. Another area related to the extensor carbi and naris longus is the distal radioulnar joint. The distal radioulnar joint stabilizers are the volar and dorsal radioulnar ligament. That joint is most stable in supination. In case of a reducible dislocation of the distal radioulnar joint by closed means, the extensor carbi and naris longus may block the reduction, especially in Galeazzi fracture. Check for palpable extensor carbi and naris tendon and check for empty sulcus. Open surgical reduction is needed. Thank you very much. I hope I was helpful.